We're gonna give you the best hypertrophy exercises for weightlifting, and we're gonna start right now. All right, so when we're thinking about weightlifting and when we're thinking about hypertrophy, a lot of weightlifters might say, I don't want to become this big, fluffy bodybuilder. I don't want to get weaker at weightlifting. I'm going to end up looking like Lee Haney, and I'm not going to be able to catch that snatch or catch that clean jerk. I'm not going to be able to rack my front squat position. And this typically is completely false, especially if we're training as weightlifters. We won't get that necessary volume to be this big hulking animal. However, we will be able to do enough hypertrophy work that we're gonna increase blood flow to problem areas. We're gonna be able to increase the stability, the structural integrity of specific issue points that are commonplace in the sport of weightlifting. And I like to think about the Chinese weightlifting team. Oftentimes when I would see them at the world championships, they would just be on the side doing sets of 30 dips or, or even doing reclining rows, something like that, just to get a big time pump after they were done training. And that's where bodybuilding can have a really, really positive impact is that not only will you increase the strength of specific areas like your knees, your lower back and your elbows and your shoulders, but you can also increase the blood flow, which is going to help with that overall recovery. So we're gonna get into some of these movements that you guys can go to the gym today and apply so that you can become a better weightlifter. All right, so the first exercise is going to be one of my favorite movements to increase shoulder strength. And that's going to be a military press. I'm gonna give you a cool rep scheme here. One of my problems with weightlifters is that they'll see dumbbell military press is on their workout and they'll grab the 40s and they'll do them for five reps and then they'll stop. And the thing that blows me away is that we should be pushing this weight quite a bit. So if we can do three sets of seven and then two sets of 12, we can really develop our shoulder strength and our tricep strength quite a bit. So let's get here. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Okay, so I'm gonna do seven there. And then what I like to do is pair this with a movement over here that's gonna actually target my abs a little bit, my lats, and it's gonna alleviate some of my lower back stress. So if I'm a weightlifter, let's say inside peak strength, we're giving you a workout, right? You wanna become an Olympic weightlifter. You wanna get stronger. Inside of your actual program, you'll see that on like day three, when you might be doing lighter variations in the gym, your hypertrophy work is gonna be a little bit heavier. Okay, so that's sort of how we like to break that up. Now, I'm gonna pair this with a hanging leg raise here. And what I like to do is with this bar, like right in the middle of your back, okay, directly in the middle. Now you can't swing as much. Yes, I'm gonna hear the comments down below that you shouldn't use the bar, and you should just prevent the swinging. That can happen, you can do that. If I have a younger athlete, or if we're at a specific point in our training, this can help prevent the swing easily, okay? We're gonna lengthen the lats, which is gonna help our shoulder strength, okay, here. And then we can even use a plate on our quads or a dumbbell in our feet. Ooh, this feels good. And we can do that for like sets of 15 to 17 reps. Rest about a minute, get back over, to the dumbbell military press and keep building that shoulder strength. Okay, so the next exercise is going to be dips. Just like I mentioned, all the Chinese weightlifters doing dips constantly. And now, I'm gonna demonstrate. This is usually a crappy weightlifter dip. They'll go like this. <laughs> they literally do like a seesaw dip, okay? Don't do that. Get set here and go straight down, back up. Straight down, back up. This thing, I don't know what this is, but like, it doesn't do anything outside of like, maybe make it a little hard to post up, okay? So if we think about our triceps and we think about our pecs, that's gonna help with that lockout position, okay? So you can get deep, come back up and lock that out, okay? I can't fully lock out my right elbow, don't attack me. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is a T-bar row. And I like to do this banded, and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do, okay? So if we think about our lats, our biceps, that's gonna help with our elbow joint, it's gonna help with shoulder stability. We just hit the triceps as well, so that's also gonna help with that lockout. Now, when we use a T-bar row, use a Kelso shrug first to pre-fatigue, and then you can go into the big time row. So it's gonna look like this. Kelso shrug. Oh, wow. Is like all lats, all rhomboids, traps. Boom. Boom. And then you go right into the row.
typically we'd have heavier dumbbells on there so that it wouldn't be sliding. Now, what that ends up doing is that a lot of weightlifters, you'll see Jake sort of has a front rack like this. That's typically one because he wrestled quite a bit when he was younger, but his rhomboids are a little bit weaker, okay? So he'd always sort of like dip forward at the bottom of his jerk. If we can strengthen your rhomboids and your traps and your lats, it's gonna help you be a little bit more upright with your posture. Okay, so I'm going through dips, Kelso shrugs right into the T-bar row. And then this next one is to get a huge tricep pump. And one thing that I've learned with weightlifters as well is that they're really good at showing up chronically, right? Like six days a week, taking a beating. It's a hard sport. There's a pounding, there's a, there's a mental game, there's technique. It's really, really, really freaking hard. But with that being said, in comparison to bodybuilding, the hard part about bodybuilding is how much pain and torture that bodybuilders go through on a set by set basis. Bodybuilding is a macro perspective, but also each set is horrible. That's why I like to use these bodybuilding exercises, these hypertrophy exercises, because it sort of triggers a different aspect of the brain for weightlifters. They learn how to deal with a different feeling of discomfort. And in this case, where I'm going is that if we do this exercise, okay, so we're in a lockout position here. And a lot of research has shown that triceps get greater stimulation in that overhead position. Ironically, we're locking out jerks overhead, snatches overhead. So we can do hypertrophy work to target that muscle building here, okay? Let's say we do a set of 17 where it's just total, total discomfort. A massive amount of pain, really. You get a huge burn, right? And then you can finish it here with a short stroke, which Earl's really good at, and you get this done with pulses, like sets of 17 to 20 at the end of that full range of motion. That's gonna help you with that shoulder strength because you're overhead, but mainly it's gonna focus on developing your triceps and into that lockout position. Okay, so the next movement, I'm gonna show you an accessory for everybody. Then I'm gonna show you an accessory for the short-limbed individuals. Okay, and I'm gonna talk about how this movement that we're gonna show you is really good for the long-limbed individuals. Then we're gonna show you the ultimate hypertrophy movement that you can use to become an absolute savage weightlifter. So, first aspect here is that if we have long-limbed weightlifters, okay, Typically their quads are a little bit weaker, a little bit smaller, myself included, because they're taller. They have very strong lower back, very strong posterior chain, but not quads. So one hypertrophy movement that you can use, because sometimes they're a little bit more prone to knee issues, is a squatting sled pull. Okay, so I wanna stay squatting like this. I wanna drive through that heel, okay? Try and stay like just above 90. Get down to this point turn it around and come back. Now, this is a movement that you can use as a warm-up, but it's also something that you can use here that I like to pair with something like leg extensions. So let's say you have a long-limbed weightlifter, okay? Get them to do this for let's say five or six lengths, and I've already got a sweet pump going right now in my quads. We can go on the leg extension, hit that for a set of 20, rest for 30, and then do that again, three or four sets. That's one way to help pull up those quads with those long limbed lifters. Okay, so the next two movements are freaking phenomenal. The first one I'm gonna demonstrate, which I just realized I have something on my arm, is going to be specifically for short limbed weightlifters, okay? So oftentimes, if you have a short limbed lifter, they tend to have very, very strong quads. If we're thinking about hypertrophy movements to help them, what we can look at is how can we develop their hamstrings more, okay? They can squat a ton because they're so quad dominant, they have that super upright trunk position, but their pulls typically aren't that good. This is an exercise that we have used in a hypertrophy-based setting to improve their pulls, okay? So we're gonna do a Nordic hamstring. We're gonna come down, oh, I'm gonna warm up a couple here, I wanna think about pulling here, okay? Think about pulling and extending the hips. So this will help at the finish of the lift. And I'll show you a little variation because that just sort of triggered me a little bit. And also think about that strength right off the floor, pushing the knees back, okay? That's gonna lengthen the hamstrings when you're in the actual technical pull. And that's where we can feel this as we come forward. Here, one more. Now, Let's say you do five to seven of those. Okay, you got a short limb lifter. They're gonna cry that their calf is cramping like right here, maybe a little bit at the bottom, closer to their knee. Okay, then the next thing you can do 
is the beaker hamstring. It's like those beakers in, what is that, chemistry or biology they used to have where they'd have that head coming forward. Okay, so you're here, boom, hip extension. Here, hip extension. Okay, so you're gonna have an isometric position that you're holding, and then you get into that hip extension at the top. So that's something that you can use for short-limbed lifters. Now, this last exercise is gonna be a hypertrophy movement that I think everybody should be using all of the time. And oftentimes, we even have our weightlifters do this every other day as a warm-up, okay? And that's gonna be a reverse hyper. Now, if you notice, I threw a little band on there just to make it a little bit more challenging at the top. You'll feel it just a little bit. And the thing is with this band is that the closer it is here, okay, at the very top, it's gonna get harder. If I wanted to be really, really, really heavy, really, really hard, I'll lower the point of the band to the floor, okay? So that way it's fully lengthened when I'm at the top. So depending upon how you're gonna use this, if we wanna get really, really strong, put the band on the floor. If we wanna get a really good pump, put the band at the top, okay? So it's a unique thing that you can do. Again, we'll do things like three sets of 30 with this movement, okay? Here, oh, there we go. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Okay, so use all these movements to improve that overall muscular hypertrophy. Make sure you're targeting specific joints that are problem areas for you in the sport of weightlifting. If you guys need help with your training, download Peak Strength. You can go to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store, and then when you download it, click on Olympic Weightlifting. That's where you can get inside of our programming so that you can become a beast. Because remember, freaks, if you wanna become a champion, you've always gotta cultivate your power. Peace.